For this video, I'm going to assume you already have some basic knowledge of Git, GitHub, and pull requests. For example, if you are looking to contribute some small bug fix or documentation change to a project, you would feel at least somewhat comfortable with the idea of forking the repo, making a change, and creating a pull request. What I'm going to focus on in this video will be more about the workflow for making more complex contributions to a project. We are going to take a bird's eye look at the process from the initial idea and discussions, testing and implementing the proposed feature, and incorporating any feedback or change requests on the PR. Once you get past basic contributions, there isn't really any one way all this stuff works. What contributing looks like and the whole process and relationship surrounding it is going to be heavily project dependent. So I can't demonstrate a process and workflow that is going to be generally applicable everywhere. But what we are going to do is take a look at my workflow for contributing to one of my favorite open source projects, ng extension. This video isn't really specifically about ng extension itself, but if you are an Angular developer looking to get more into open source, this really is a great project for that. It's a kitchen sink of utilities for Angular contributed by the community, and each individual utility is generally quite small and isolated, so it's quite reasonable to get up to speed quickly and make more complex contributions. <laughs> the term reasonable is, is hilarious in this situation. So what we are going to do is walk through the whole process of contributing the create notifier feature to ng extension, which is a lot simpler than signal slice, but still touches on all the important parts of the process. The very first thing you should do the first time you are trying to contribute some code to a project is to read through the contributing.md file if it exists to get a sense of what is expected. From reading this file in the ng extension project, I know that if I want to contribute a feature, I should follow the conventional commits convention, create a secondary entry point for my feature and write tests for my feature. Sometimes it might be appropriate to just launch right into building the feature and sending a pull request. But if you are doing this, especially for a larger feature, keep in mind that it is perfectly reasonable and expected for your pull request to be rejected and you might just waste a bunch of time. If you do this, I think it's a good idea to let maintainers know you're happy for them to throw away this idea because it can be awkward or difficult for maintainers having to reject someone's work. In general, I think the aim should be to make the maintainers' lives easier because of your contributions, not harder. Although it might not always be possible, it goes a long way to have established relationships with people involved in the project. For this particular feature, I had a discussion about the concept with one of the maintainers of the project, who noted that they and others had similar ideas. This then led to an issue being created in the repository to gather feedback and opinions and settle on an initial API for the feature. I think an important thing to keep in mind is to not let your ego get in the way when ideas are being discussed. We can often feel a sense of ownership and attachment to our ideas, but open source is a collaborative effort and compromise can be important. That said, design by a committee also has its flaws, so there is certainly room for advocating for your views, you just need to try and strike a balance. Now we get into the fun bit, actually building the thing. This is actually something I'll often do first, even before discussing anything or opening any issues. It's useful to do this as a first step to just play around and see if you can create a proof of concept, which can also help discussing the idea in more detail with others. I already have a fork of ng extension set up on my machine, so when I want to make some contribution, I can just open that up. There's a problem here though. I might have updated this fork the last time I contributed to this project, which might have been days, weeks, or even months ago. That means the code I have here might be significantly behind the code in the main repo. To make working on this project continuously easy, we need to add an upstream remote to our repo that points to the main repo for the project. Just like our locally cloned repo will point to our own remote repository on GitHub, which is where we push to, we can also add another remote that points to the main repo for the project that we originally forked. This way we can easily pull in the latest changes into our own fork of the repo. So when I'm about to start working on some contribution, I will fetch the latest from the upstream remote and then rebase my main branch onto the main branch from the upstream, which will pull in all of the latest changes into my repo. I will then push the changes that were just made to my local repo to my own remote repository, and now everything is up to date. Then I can create a new branch off of main for my feature. Now it's time to add some code. 
In the case of ng extension, they provide some guidelines on setting up a secondary entry point, so I can follow that advice to set up my feature. Now I have a blank space to work on my feature. It's important to try and follow the general conventions of the project you are contributing to. Try to avoid just following whatever patterns you like to use. Try to figure out what style of code the project generally uses and follow that. What we can do here is just look at some of the other utilities to see how they are built. The utility itself is easy enough because generally it is just an exported function. So I can just create a create notify.ts file and export some dummy function. For the test, what I'll typically do is just copy over the structure of some existing tests into my own feature and then just swap out the other feature with my own feature. Now I have a test setup that follows the conventions the project is already using and I can start writing some tests of my own. Often I prefer a TDD approach, so I'll write tests for how the utility should behave first, but I might also go with the implementation first and write tests after the fact if I'm not as sure about what the API for the feature will actually look like. But aside from the other benefits of testing, writing tests provides a great development workflow. Because what I can do is write a test for how I want this thing to behave, and then rather than having some dummy project that uses the utility that I have to serve and manually test to see if my implementation is working, I can just run the tests. You can even use the tried and true console.log method of debugging your implementation with tests too. With this process, I can implement basically the entire feature without ever having to even open a web browser. Now that the feature is complete, we should run all of the tests and if everything is passing, we can submit our pull request. If your feature is incomplete or you need feedback or help to get it into a completed state, or maybe this is more of a proof of concept, it might also be appropriate to open a draft pull request and request feedback. For more complex features or contributions in general, it is likely that you'll receive some kind of feedback or request for change on your PR. To update your PR with any feedback, you can just make changes normally and push to your branch again, and it will update your pull request. Typically, you will grant maintainers the ability to update your branch if they want to as well, so in some cases they might just make the changes required directly and merge without your needing to do anything. People might also leave suggested changes, where rather than just requesting a change on something, they might actually provide the suggested code change. In this case, if you want to accept that change, you can just click commit suggestion to automatically apply the change to your fork without needing to actually do anything yourself. And that's about it. Hopefully your pull request gets accepted and merged and you can go through this whole process again some other time. We looked at contributing a feature, but this process will look more or less the same for just about any type of contribution. If you like this video, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you back here again. 